the Prime Minister still under pressure with Labour questioning why he didn't come clean about this sooner, saying that it's hypocritical of him to have done so much and criticised those who go to extraordinary lengths to move their money around while he himself had money that was uh, invested in this offshore company. Well, I'm joined now by the Conservative MP, Mark Pritchard. Um, do you accept that this is damaging for the Prime Minister? No, I don't. I think the Labour Party want and wish that it's uh, damaging to the Prime Minister. I, in fact, I think most of the public will probably find it distasteful that uh, somebody who's passed away, the Prime Minister's uh, late father, is being brought into this. And I understand why the Prime Minister, like any loving son, would want to uh, protect his father's business interests, which occurred some years ago. So I, I think it's very unseemly, very distasteful, and I think there's a real injustice, and that's why I'm here today in the recess uh, making these comments. I don't know all the details, but I think there's a principle at stake here. It's about justice, and it's an injustice that the Prime Minister's late father, who did the best for his family, a loving father, a loving son, is not here to defend himself. But the Prime Minister has made much of this issue of tax and has said that he will, it is morally wrong for people to try to move their money around to try to avoid paying any more tax. Uh, shouldn't he at least have come clean earlier? Because doesn't it look as though he's got something to hide? Well, first of all, David Cameron has done more than any other Prime Minister, including Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, to tackle aggressive tax avoidance. And not even the top tax lawyers or, or tax journalists in this country have accused the Prime Minister of aggressive tax avoidance. Everything he did was legal. It was a very long time ago. He sold uh, his interests uh, before he became Prime Minister. If he was still Prime Minister with some offshore funds at this point, he would have more difficulty. But this is a long time ago. He dealt with it in the right way and in the transparent way. And I think the reason that it's taken three or four days to come out is that he quite naturally, like everybody, has family uh, and love their family members wanted to protect uh, the reputation of his father who's not here to defend himself. But there is this charge of hypocrisy isn't there and this sense that the ordinary public most voters don't have the option of moving their money into offshore funds so that they pay lower rates of tax. Look, some parts of the world, uh, prime ministers and politicians are required to publish their uh, tax accounts. It's been a private matter in this country. I think it should remain a, a private matter. However, the prime minister has said that he will uh, publish his, his tax returns. He's been very, very open about his property ownership, his other uh, uh, ownership. I don't think he should be discriminated against just because he was born into a wealthy family. The majority of us would have liked to have been born into uh, a wealthy family. The majority of us aren't, but it's absolutely right rights that people should be entitled to minimise their tax. And we all do it through ISAs, for example. The government actually encourages tax uh, minimisation. So as long as people are doing th uh, things legally and lawfully, that's all that really matters. And I think what this is about is the Labour Party trying to distract attention away from their own party, which is disunited, uh, a party that we understand today half the shadow cabinet are going to walk out after the EU referendum. But but when you look at the scale of the revelations about this firm, uh, Mossack Vonseca, which uh, Ian Cameron, David Cameron's father, uh, used for some of his clients, inevitably this is going to be hugely damaging for his reputation, just as he's trying to fight not just that EU referendum, but the coming local elections as well. Look, we're in the parliamentary recess, and to be fair to the media, there isn't really a lot to talk about, so they're talking uh, about this issue. The Prime Minister of Iceland has resigned and then unresigned, so they're perhaps trying to piggyback on the back of that. They're completely different issues, completely different uh, circumstances. The Prime Minister has paid all the tax that he is required to do, uh, do so. He's, he's made it absolutely clear what his position is today, and what I would say, I think some of the senior leadership in UKIP and the shadow cabinet need to perhaps be encouraged to publish their tax returns and come clean about some of their possible offshoring activities.